happy Valentine's Day, dear listener. Welcome to a special bonus episode of the Milk Making Minutes, a podcast that explores breastfeeding struggles and triumphs through the lens of cultural barriers. One of the barriers to feeding our babies human milk is that we often feel we are feeding our babies in isolation. Sometimes when it comes to breastfeeding, partners can really get a bad rap. But today, we're going to focus on those partners who really stepped up to the plate. Think back to your own experiences feeding your babies. Did you have supportive family in your life? If you have a partner, were they in it with you? We know that supportive partnerships lead to better breastfeeding outcomes. So today, on Valentine's Day, let's celebrate those partners who helped us to feed our babies. And we're truly that, partners. We start with Chelsea's husband. Chelsea was featured on episode 21 of the Milk Making Minutes. She talked about how birth setting impacted her postpartum and breastfeeding experiences. She is also a member of my Milk Making Minutes community group on Facebook. And when I asked for members of the group to send in audio describing their supportive partners, she immediately told me she would. This is what she had to say about her husband. So whenever my first child was born, my husband and I were just not in a super great place financially, just young and first time parents. And it was all very overwhelming. He was very supportive of me breastfeeding, of course. And a lot of that was even financially driven from him, but also just recognizing the importance of it and understanding how important it was to me. And that was a decision that we made together. Um, And it was difficult, but we felt like we couldn't afford to get help. And he did end up even talking. He wasn't shy or embarrassed to talk to some other women at work that he knew and had someone call me and really help me through some of the breastfeeding process. But it was still just a long, hard road, like just very difficult that first time around. And I ended up only breastfeeding for six months, which is great. Six months is a really long time. And I am proud of that. But my goal, of course, was 12 months at least. And fast forward to three years later, whenever my second child was born, we were just in such a better place, even just our marriage. Like we had been through some things and sought therapy and thoughts, sought help and some counseling for our relationship. And we just really decided to go all in on each other and really just choose each other all over again. And we put in some work into our marriage, even though we were six years in already. So by the time our second child was born, we were really in an even better place than whenever our first child was born. And also just job wise and financially wise, a little bit further along naturally by being in the career field for longer. And my husband was able to have more time off. And I just didn't quite experience the same sort of shock and postpartum things that I did the first time around. But breastfeeding is still very challenging. And we were referred to a lactation consultant and called her and found out how much she cost and had her come out to the house. And she was just such a huge blessing. And my husband was just all in, all on board. He was there. He never thought of the lactation consultant as like an appointment for just me. He was there in the room, engaged, ready to hear and listen what she had to say to help support me. And she had things for him and gave him instructions on how he can support me. She came maybe on Penny's third day of life and she would come every couple of days and every week for the first month or so or two two months or so. And he, I mean, 100% feeding that baby was like a two person job for, I don't know why she just, (laughs) I just have babies with tiny mouths and tiny little babies. And then I have these giant nipples, I guess. And just, gosh, I really needed him. I was feeding this baby every two to three hours. And he was right there with me feeding that baby every two to three hours. And he was helping me get her in position. It was definitely like weeks on end, every single feeding 
that I had to help, I had to have his help getting the baby latched properly and into position. And it was just a team effort. We were doing it together and he was helping me keep her awake too. She just was a sleepy baby that first week or whatever. And it was all, you know, he was just so involved. And so he would bring me whatever I needed. He was making sure that I was taking my placenta pill that we had encapsulated every day. He was making sure that I, right after a feeding, would be like, okay, now you need to go take a nap, go. This needs to be your resting time. Just, I've got the baby. Go straight into the bedroom, turn off the lights. Do what you need to do. You need to take a nap now. And he would get up. Middle of the night feedings were also never just me. He would, you know, if the baby was crying, if we would co-sleep with her, I would co-sleep with her a little bit, but we also had the bassinet. So he would wake up, turn on the light, sit up with me, help me latch. And obviously this was happening, what, four or five times a night? And he was up every time. He would even come up with different ideas like to try to help us to stay awake and help us both to keep the baby awake too he would be like oh we should listen to a podcast or we should listen to a book together or something while we're doing this maybe even turn on some music since he was troubleshooting his own self because he was getting sleepy and he was feeling bad when if he would fall asleep we would both fall asleep while she was doing a middle of the night feeding or whatever and he just he always he changed every diaper he just was absolutely a hundred percent involved he did not once have any kind of attitude that this was my thing, just my thing that I did for the baby. And he had different roles and different jobs for things that he did for the baby. It just didn't feel that way. And it still doesn't feel that way. You know, that baby is two now and our other child is five. And we are just, we are parents together. There is no, we work together as a team. We divvy up roles, what have you, but there's no, oh, this is always your role and this is always my role. Stay in your lane. It's just a constant team effort, teamwork. And that's how breastfeeding was for us. And he made the comment a couple weeks in after Penny was born that he wished so badly that he had seen the value of a lactation consultant the first time around and just spent the money because at that time we were just so stressed about money and of course me not working on maternity leave and everything and he just said I can't believe I didn't see that the money would have been worth it and how much just like stress and heartache and pain physical and <laughs> spiritual mental pain that it would have saved me to have that help because of how much help the our beautiful wonderful lactation consultant was with Penn. that's our story of my sweet valentine husband and how he was so supportive of me breastfeeding and i'm eternally grateful for him are you pregnant or a new parent looking to ensure a better postpartum experience or are you a birth worker looking to improve your postpartum care skills? Check out Thriving After Birth, an online self-paced course by me, midwife and educator, Tanya Tringali. It's 10 and a half hours of video content featuring experts in lactation, mental health, pelvic floor health, pediatric sleep issues. You also get worksheets and a workbook as well as options to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Sign up at motherwitmaternity.com slash thriving and let's improve postpartum care together. I have started to have a lot of fun on TikTok by getting curious about other people's experiences. If you want to follow me there, we can become friends. I'm Lo Nigrosh, IBCLC. So what I do there is I will ask a question about how others experienced a certain aspect of postpartum life or baby feeding or pumping, and I get so many great responses in the comments. I really enjoy engaging with people there. This next story comes from someone I became connected with on TikTok. She answered my call for stories there. Jordan shouted out not just her husband, but other people in her family who she loves. This type of whole family support makes feeding human milk to our babies that much less difficult. Imagine what it would be like if everyone who attempted breastfeeding received this type of support. Imagine how much further so many more people would go. Imagine the goals people would reach if we could help people to support their families in this way. So I have a very supportive family whenever it comes to breastfeeding. My husband's super supportive. He thinks it's super bad butt, as he would put it, that I'm able to just breastfeed for wherever, 
However, he thinks it's really cool. I don't know that he understands how much energy it actually takes, but he is very supportive in any way that I need. My mom wasn't able to breastfeed me or my sister, so she thinks it's super beautiful. She thinks it's one of the coolest things that I'm able to do it, even though she wasn't able to, her mom wasn't able to, my sister didn't try. Um, but she's very supportive and has done a lot of research and studies on breastfeeding since I've been breastfeeding. My mother-in-law has been super helpful and super supportive. Both of my in-laws, my father-in-law too. But my mother-in-law, she breastfed four kids. And so she is able to give me lots of tips and... Um, any question I have, I normally take to her first just because she did spend so long breastfeeding herself. And so her and my father-in-law are both super supportive, never made me feel awkward about breastfeeding in front of them or anything. And same with my dad. He's also been supportive. He's the kind of person that gets very uncomfortable with anything that has to do with bodies or conversations about that. Being a man with two daughters, he didn't like talking about anything of the sorts or any feminine thing but he has been super supportive with breastfeeding and has even bragged to his friends about how um good I am at feeding my baby and he just thinks it's really cool that I'm able to do that. Sarah gave birth to twins in 2020. So many of her plans for support went out the window once COVID struck. Good thing she had her husband, Joey. Joey went, my partner, my husband, uh -huh. went on that visit with me. And that was also, he, he talks about that visit as well as being a way that he felt like he could better support me. Mm. He was phenomenal during the entire time. He was like, whatever you want to do, we will do. And would like... He's the master diaper changer. Would change the baby, bring him over to me. And then while I was holding that baby, he would change that baby and bring him over to me so I could football hold. Like I couldn't That's have done not. it without Joey. Like I literally yeah. could not have done it. He really was the rock because he would change all the diapers. He would, when we would try to settle them, I <laughs> had this image. We weren't doing pacifiers or anything. He had two pinkies out. He would stick them in their mouths while they were in the bassinet after they'd feed and try to get them to go down. Horrible angle on his back, like leaning over the bassinets while I'm like sitting on the couch trying to recover or clean up or or even if I'm burping, he's like rocking another kid to sleep. He was just, mm -hmm. he was involved every step of the way. There were sometimes I was like, I'm sorry that you have to do that. He's like, no, you are feeding two humans right now. You are feeding our babies right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be over here washing the pumping materials or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was, was and is just like phenomenally supportive in ways that I don't ever feel like I have to ask. I think we're just very much on the same page about what we wanted to do and to support that. Yeah. Yeah. And you also mentioned you would get all set up on the couch and then he would bring you babies mm -hmm. and then bring you snacks or whatever you needed. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you discussed or was that something that he just did intuitively? We probably discussed it, but to be honest, I didn't ask him to do that. He said, this is how it's probably going to be. And I was like, yeah, probably. Okay. It's just it, in order to attempt to get some sort of schedule and like control over our lives so that we could nap or we could right. eat or we could take a shower to try to be the most efficient in those moments. You can hear Sarah's full story of breastfeeding twins during COVID on episode 35 of the Milk Making Minutes. But of course, I would be remiss if on Valentine's Day, I didn't share how supported I felt by my own Valentine of 14 years. I felt very supported during my milk making years. So I asked my husband, Max, to sit down with me and offer his perspective of those times and to give me a chance to tell him how much I felt supported by him. My name is Max and I am Lowe's husband. How long have we been together? We've been married for 11 years. We've been together just about 13. Is it 13 or 14 now? I think it's- it May have been 14, yeah, because yeah. we were together about three years. Did I fail that test? Fail? 
Gail. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about when I was struggling so much to breastfeed Charlie. We did a lot of birth prep. Yes. We were like overachieving birth preppers. We were trying, yes. <laughs> And we had a lot of ideas about what baby feeding would be like, or at least I did. I didn't think as much about baby feeding before Charlie was born as you did. I That was something that I was able to push off and not really actively think about ahead of time. I thought about the birth. I thought about setting up for having a kid. I thought about structuring our lives. I thought about those sorts of things, but feeding didn't really enter into my major list of concerns before Charlie was born. So did you have any sense that breastfeeding could be as difficult for a person as it was for me? I knew that a lot of people tried and didn't successfully breastfeed for as long as they wanted. You did know that? I did know that. How did you know that? Friends and family. I don't have a specific time where I learned that. It's just that was part of my understanding was that many people wanted to breastfeed and not everyone was successful. Did you understand before Charlie's birth how important it was to you important no. it was to me <laughs> no i did not <laughs> really no i you had said that you wanted to breastfeed i did not know the lengths to which you were prepared to go to make sure that happened and i don't think that you really knew before you were there either but i in my memory was not one of, i was not someone and i just want to be clear that I was not someone who said, I'm going to try it. I'll see how it goes. Set out from the beginning saying, I will breastfeed. Yes. You said that. Okay. Okay. And I say that with the caveat to say, as a lactation consultant, it is not my expectation that I think everybody should say that. I think everybody has to make the decision for them what is going to be best for their family situation, for their own mental health, for the mental health of their family. And so just because I said I will breastfeed and I went to great lengths to make that happen, I do not push my clients to do that because I think each person has, a, has their own unique set of circumstances. and. The decisions that I make are not always the decisions that I think every person should make. Just want to mm -hmm. differentiate that what I'm talking about on a personal level here is not what I infuse into my practice for every person. How quickly did you understand that it was going to be a struggle for me? First of all, Charlie had a really cool breast crawl. So if you I'm sure you do remember. Um, he did all of the kind of classic signs of rooting and reaching and he, it was really cool to see. And so pretty soon after he was born, he was feeding. He got milk and you felt a letdown and you were super excited. And it was one of the many things that you cried about that day. <laughs> so it wasn't until probably three weeks in where it was consistently painful and consistently problematic that I understood that it was really not going as well as it should. I have a completely different memory. Of really? What's yours? That it was painful from the very beginning. I remember being in tears from the beginning early on and feeling lost and not knowing who I could call, calling La Leche League, but also feeling like making a different choice was not the right choice. Yeah, you were determined at that point. Yeah. So where did you see 
your role? Like, how did you feel you could help? I am not, was not, don't really have, I think, the the positioning to be an expert at breastfeeding. That's not something that I can help with. I did try. I remember talking about the latch and looking at making sure that his mouth was really open and he was taking in enough of the areola. And I remember you asking me to look and see and just based on what the lactation counselor told us, trying to be a support there for you. But that wasn't really, I think, helpful other than emotionally. I think having someone there as well, who was aware of what was going on, who could see it, who was trying, was emotionally helpful, even if it wasn't actually doing anything for (laughs) the pain or Charlie. So that's, I think, where I was most helpful, was getting you things to eat or drink or when you were when you were nursing and being as available as I could to help out with doctor's appointments and trucking him around to different specialists for the cranial specialist and the I think he went to a chiropractor for craniosacral therapy just trying to be available and supportive for that but I wasn't driving any of the decisions in terms of what was happening with you or Charlie as it related to nursing I think I was basically just a cheerleader and trying to take as much of the emotional burden as I could. Did you feel like that level of support made a difference? No. I think in terms of the actual difficulty you were having breastfeeding, it was not emotional. It was not psychological. There wasn't really that sort of the problem was primarily pain and all of the associated like loss of sleep and suffering that goes along with that. It seemed to me to be a physical problem that I was softening around the edges by helping out with the emotional aspect of it. But I don't think I was helpful in terms of finding a solution or decreasing that the underlying problem of the pain that, that you were in nursing. No, you couldn't take away the pain, but neither could anybody else. And there there are plenty of partners who might have thought this person is out of her mind. She needs a little bit of perspective here. And I never tried to dissuade you from breastfeeding. I knew that was really important to you. And I knew that there was no harm coming to my child, to Charlie, because of it. it was your own burden and your own suffering that was concerning, that was the problem. And I didn't feel that it was my place to try to discourage you from breastfeeding. If this was important to you and you were carrying the burden, my role was to support you as best as I was able to, not try to change your opinion or your thoughts. And I think had that become a point of conflict, I think it would have been a lot harder for us. Were there times when you were wondering why it was so important? Not wondering why it was so important. You could articulate even then the benefits of breastfeeding to to the bond between mother and child and to the antibodies that he was able to get and nutrition and weight and all of that. You were able to articulate those things. We had learned enough. And so it was important to you on a physiological level. And I understood that. The difference was the psychological importance to you. I think it was really important to you to be able to feed your child with your own body. And that was something that I didn't really fully understand, but it also wasn't my place to diminish or second guess. I am adopted, I never breastfed. And so I think it could have been easy to say, I'm okay and I never breastfed for an instant. That's your decision. And I think that if I had tried to discourage you, it wouldn't have lessened your suffering, your psychological desire to feed your baby. No, it wouldn't have. It would have actually probably made things worse because I would have felt just utterly alone. Yeah. And I, too, and I think a lot of, people can relate. I, to this day, can't really explain why it was so important to me to keep going despite all the struggle. We did end up doing some supplementation for Charlie. 
for both of our kids. I actually hated the formula. It smelled different than your milk. It moved different than your milk. It was thicker. It was stickier. It was hard to clean up. It went bad really quickly. So if there were drops that you didn't immediately clean up, it, it smelled. So I really did not like the formula at all. And it changed his poop too. I remember when he was on formula, it was much harder to change his diaper. We were using those cloth diapers. And when he was on formula, cleaning that up was just not fun. It was awful. And so I actually didn't like the formula. Even though I was able to have that moment with him cuddling and feeding him and looking into his eyes and all that kind of stuff. That was nice. And I think it helped me to bond with him, but it was, I did not like the formula. I needed to take a break and I didn't have enough of a stash. I was trying to take a break to preserve my damaged nipples. And so we gave some formula, is my memory, the first time. And I was bawling and I was sitting in the rocking chair and you were like, do you want me to feed them? What's good? And I was like, no, it has to be me. It has to come from me. I have to feed them. You have to feed him that first bottle. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you remember that? I remember backing out of the situation. Just kind <laughs> of <laughs> not sure what to do, but pretty evidently making things worse. So I just extracted myself. <laughs> do you remember ever having conversations with anybody else about how crazed your wife was about breastfeeding? I think I had one conversation with my mom about it. I think um, my mom. And so she, she was probing, trying to figure out why. She had adopted two sons and never breastfed. And so I think she was having more trouble than I was understanding that it was as important to you as it was. And so she was seeing your suffering, not super close, but close enough to, to understand that it was difficult and painful and trying to figure out why we weren't just bottle feeding. So she was having more trouble understanding what, why you were pushing as hard as you could to only breastfeed. And she didn't understand the sadness that you were feeling at supplementing when we had to do that. So I think she was the only one who I talk to in any kind of depth about. Can I tell you some of the ways that I felt you were incredibly supportive? Please. <laughs> Lay it on me. <laughs> you want me to massage your feet while I do it? That would be great. That would be great. So you did, in fact, have a great memory for what lactation consultants had told me. You did not go to every appointment, but you went to a lot of the early appointments. And so there were many times in those first few weeks when I was just trying to get organized and I really had no idea what I was doing. And the learning curve was very steep. I would literally be calling you into the room. Like, Max, come in, I'm trying to latch him. Baby's crying, I can't get him latched. I'm in a lot of pain. And you would be right there with me, helping me latch the baby without batting an eye. Your ability to remember the information and then retain it for me because I was not in a state to do that was incredibly helpful. Yeah. You also took notes at some of the appointments. And the fact that you did not pressure me either way, you let me just fully lead was critical to me being able to make decisions that I needed to make. It really was. And it's not that you tapped out and said, this has nothing to do with me because you were involved, but you recognized that it was my body, as you said. You were happy to talk about it for hours. 
if I needed to. I'll say willing. Happy is maybe the wrong <laughs> word. You engaged readily in the conversations as needed. You helped with skincare as needed. I never felt a pressure to make a decision one way or another. I never felt the pressure from you to keep going. I never felt the pressure from you to stop. I felt fully supported to make the decisions that I needed to make in any given moment. And you, of course, made the hardest ones. <laughs> Not always. I did decide to supplement with formula to give myself True. a little break. And True. when I was going back to work and was not producing enough, we did supplement with some formula then. And even then, I never felt judgment like, okay, you have to use formula. There was never, I just felt like you were with me. I was making the decisions and you were right there cheering me on. However it went, and also if I needed to be sad about it, there was never this, oh, come on. Like he's healthy, he's growing. You allowed me to feel whatever feelings I was feeling. And I think that's really important for anyone in these times of trying to feed a baby. And you know what? Our kids are nine and five. And I still have these moments where I still feel incredibly responsible for them being well-adjusted human beings and can come to crisis moments where I don't know that that's happening and it doesn't end at baby feeding. And also your willingness to invest financially in the things I needed to do to be okay with breastfeeding. So a lot of people make the point that breastfeeding is not free and it isn't. I had to pay lactation consultants. I would do it again. I had to pay craniosacral therapists. I would do it again. We had multiple tongue tie procedures done for Charlie, unfortunately. I would probably do it again. Now I know that nine years ago, we were at the forefront of that field. It actually was new. We didn't know it then. You know, maybe my story would have turned out differently had we known. But you were willing, there was never a moment when you were like, do we really want to spend that money? I'm sure there were those moments. I just didn't let you see them. Of course. <laughs> Yeah. I was bringing it up too. I know this is expensive. We were bringing them up as a couple, but it was not in a judgmental way. We were bringing them up as all couples bring up financial considerations. Yeah. But it was never in a way like you aren't worth it. This isn't worth it. Oh, of course. Not. It was. I recognize that all families only have a certain amount of money and there was never a sense of it is not worth it to spend this money on your mental health and on your well-being to be able to get this right. And then another way you were supportive is I was somebody who wanted to be able to feed my baby anywhere and everywhere, regardless of who we were with and what the situation was. And you were fully supportive of that. You didn't bat an eye. You just made sure that it was clear that even when I was out and about with your friends breastfeeding at the Super Bowl party, you never made it awkward. It was very clear that this was just the way that we fed our baby. And, and now that I have spent so much time in this field supporting other people, I recognize that is very clearly not the case for a lot of people. And even as Charlie got older and then Jolie got older and older, it was never an issue. So a lot of times people are okay with their babies nursing for a long time. And then as they become big children walking up to you and demanding to be nursed in full sentences, it becomes more difficult for the partner. But that wasn't the case for you. I did never have any problems with that, I don't think. I do remember, I have a memory of, of us, of the three of us in bed and you turned away from me and were nursing Charlie and pushing me to the side. <laughs> and I remember being a little frustrated about that. That was 
That was pretty early on, but it was past the stage where I was worried I was going to break him. When he was a person, he was going to be okay. But still, you were turning away from me and and feeding him at a moment where I wanted some attention. And I remember that stung a little bit. But I never had a problem with breastfeeding in public or um, or feeding our kids whatever age they were. And I know we only talked about Charlie's situation because the first is seared into your memory in a slightly different way in a slightly different way now that does bring me to another question because i feel like joe lee was like my chance to have a redeeming birth my chance to have a redeeming breastfeeding story were you worried at all i know i was i was worried that breastfeeding like i was having a home birth and if it didn't work out that I didn't have a home birth, I could get over that because that's like a moment in time and it ends. But for me, breastfeeding goes on for years. <laughs> that's the hope. So if breastfeeding had not turned out, that could have gone very poorly. Like I could, my, I could have had a mental breakdown. Yeah, and I think I was more worried for you than for running into any kind of situation. I understood that Charlie's situation was hopefully not going to be repeated to the same extent. And, and so I, I thought it was going to be better, but I knew that you also had done a lot of studying and a lot of research, partially spurred on by the difficulties you had with Charlie. So I knew that you were invested pretty significantly in and having Jolie's experience work out better. Um, so I was maybe a little worried that it was going to be difficult and it was going to be discouraging for you, but I was pretty sure it was going to be better than it was the first time around, so I wasn't really? particularly worried, yeah. I had a deeply rooted fear that it was going to be the exact same experience. I... You had put time into figuring out breastfeeding. And you're good at this. I knew it was going to be better. Not only because every experience is a little different and the first one was bad, so there's more room for it to be better than more just in the random roll of the die. But also you had put a lot of time and effort and energy into it. And I knew that you were going to be working hard and in a different way and a from a place of better understanding and knowledge wow it worked out yeah so thanks for being such a supportive partner i didn't know i was but thank you you were thanks for coming on the milk making minutes anytime all right love you love you too Thanks to those of you who shared about how supportive your partners are. And thank you to all the partners out there who recognize that milk making is often a family effort. And for those of you who don't have great support, I see you. And that is why I work tirelessly to spread awareness of the systemic and cultural barriers that exist so that fewer and fewer people must learn to feed their babies in isolation and with very little true help. If you do need lactation help, I am so happy to provide that. Just find my information linked in the show notes. No matter where you are on the spectrum of feeling supported, I hope that you have a happy Valentine's Day.